Welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a casted game of Corvinus. I don't think it's been too long since we've casted a game of him, but, you know, his games are just too damn good to miss out on. Because he's always coming up with the, the new interesting metas on the ladder. It may not be the most optimal, but they're always the most entertaining. And that's what we love to see here. So we're going to be casting him today, spawning in on the left-hand side of the map. Well, it's more south. That's the kind of left-hand side, isn't it? Left-hand side in the color green, playing as the English. So maybe we see an Abbey of Kings out of him today. Could definitely be something that he looks to go towards. Something that's definitely been picking up in the ladder recently. But his opponent spawning in on the right-hand side of the map in the color yellow. We've got CDF who is someone I haven't actually heard of before, but there is currently sitting at quite high on the ladder. It's uh, been quite recent since we've had a new season. Season 5 obviously just, just come about. So he's currently sitting at Conk 1, but his, uh, his actual ranking is a lot higher in terms of where he's at on the leaderboard. So certainly still a good player here. We'll have to see what he looks to do with this matchup because he's playing as the French here in the color yellow. We see he's already gone out for the deer here. Have a look at this. Really, really cool what he's done here. He's pushed in all of the deer underneath that mill. Now going to be grabbing himself a wheelbarrow. Interestingly, not survival techniques, which is something I thought we would be seeing here with this sort of build, where you push all of, the, all of the deer in, right? And then you grab survival techniques to buff that gather rate. But interestingly, he's not looked to, to have done that. And you're grabbing wheelbarrow here, but you've got to ask yourself the question, what for? You know, you're grabbing wheelbarrows so your villagers don't have to move as far. But look, these villagers, they don't have to move that far at all. So I think in this, in this sort of situation, survival techniques is the better upgrade. Because it's so cheap as well. Look look how cheap that is. It, it costs less than 70 resources. So really, really nice upgrade there to grab. Wheelbarrow is still going to be nice. You know, it scales throughout the game. So... Great to see Wheelbarrow coming in, but I'd love to see this upgrade as well. Maybe he does look to grab it as he's still chopping away at some wood here. He's also grabbing himself forestry. No. No. We're not seeing a Chamber of Commerce build, are we? He's moving out for stone now, so I'm a little bit confused about that one. But the reason I'm thinking a Chamber of Commerce is because of that forestry. We only ever see people grab this upgrade when they're going for a Chamber of Commerce build. Because Chamber of Commerce gives you the a free trader for every technology that you've grabbed when it comes to your economy. So, I think that's definitely a possibility here. Oh, we're going to have to keep an eye out on him. Because he's already grabbed two upgrades. It's going to be two free traders for him. You know, I, I came into this game thinking Corvinus would be the one coming out with the cr crazy strats. But it looks like he's playing it quite standard here. With just the council hall. But CDF, I think he's going to be doing it. Maybe he looks to move out some villagers to this side of the map to place it down. But oh, well, we're going to have to wait and see. Moving some more villagers over now to that stone outcropping. Villager going to be moving to the back. And there it is. The chamber of commerce. Going to get built with five villagers there. Or three. Okay, just three. Not looking to rush up this landmark. And I assume now you want to be... I'm a little bit confused of why we're mining the stone here. Maybe it is going to be for a second TC. But I'm a little surprised we aren't just here on the stone, on the gold rather. Because you want to be gathering up lots of these upgrades, right? Just to get all of these, uh, to get all of those free traders, right? You want to get double products. You want to grab specialized pick. You want to grab uh, survival techniques. You want to grab horticulture. You want to grab all of these upgrades. To get yourself as many free traders as possible to make this landmark really worth it. But for the time being, he's on the stone. We'll have to see what he looks to do. That I think it is going to be a second TC based on the, the villager distribution here. We see he's got mostly villagers on wood and a few on stone. But he's already gathered up almost enough stone. Corvinus, on the other hand, it looks like he's going to be going for a second TC as well. Has the council hall up. Now, English aren't the best of civilizations against dealing with trade, mainly because of their army composition. It's usually quite slow. At least it was before Season 5. And the change in that is because of the king. But Corvinus here hasn't aged up with the Abbey of Kings, so he isn't going to have the, the the knight here, the king, with horsemen. That's something we, we've been seeing a little bit more of. Lots of horsemen, the knight, the king in there. No, that would be a great composition here to deal with any sort of trade coming out from CDF. 
But Corvinus is just playing it with the Council Hall here. Going into another TC. May even go for three TC here. We are on the map. Uh, Highview? No, not Highview. Hill and Dale. That, that's the map. So you can play it pretty greedy on this map. Though that's sort of changed a little bit in Season 5 as well. And that's mainly because of the resources. You are now only have one stone mine and one gold vein on top of the hill. Before in Season 4... You used to have big ones, so like the, the 8,000 here and the, the 2,400 2, one on top of the hill, which was pretty bonkers. If you think about it, it's a lot of resources on top of a hill, which you can very easily wall off. So I like that change a lot, but Corvinus, it looks like it's going to be going for that 2TC as well as CDF. We see that second TC is going to be coming down here. Now, let's take a look at Corvinus' uh, perspective here. He's running the scout into the back of the base. If if CDF takes this out, this could be huge for him. Because if Corvinus doesn't know about this age up, that could be huge for him. Because at the moment, he doesn't know that this Chamber of Commerce is up. So it looks like Corvinus is just keeping a scout at the front. If he doesn't scout, scout this out at all, that could be huge. That could be absolutely huge as we see that first... That, that's not a trader. The first trader has come out here and it's going to be heading towards this side of the map. Actually, that's not the second one. That's the that's the first one. That's the second one. Okay, so Corvinus is going to be spotting that out. So I'm really curious as to why CDF's trading with this one. I, I guess you do have the better... Oh my goodness, look at this. CDF, you are one greedy, greedy man. Three TCs plus Chamber of Commerce? I'm sorry, what? He's getting out some good trade here as well. He's going to be able to pick up some nice trade. Trade has been a little bit reworked. So he's going to get a first bit of drop off here as soon as he reaches that trade post. And he's going to get another one on the way back as well. Looks like CDF's going to be now looking to move over to berries. Still has some deer available to him, but also does have the boar over here. He can look to grab as well. I think that's the plan with this third TC. But Corvinus is going to be moving out now with some longbow. He's on 2TC, starting to make a little bit of a farm transition. Council Hall providing a, a lot of uh, a lot of longbows for him right now. He's up to two. There should be enough. You, you might want to get out a couple spears or something as well, just to try and slow down these traders a little bit. But it looks like CDF has these set to gold for the time being. Not going to be switching them over to wood or anything like that. And let's take a look, see how much... Oh, I missed it. You have to be at the right perspective to see how much gold. But the second one will be coming in soon. So let's see how much he gets. Okay, 70. It's not bad. So you get 70 for each trip. So it's like uh, 140 for each uh, each way they... Or each time they make this trip. So that's a nice amount of gold. CDF's also on 3TC. So his economy is going to be booming. You know, it's not only on 3TC, but he's on the French 3TC. Which is the best you can possibly get. Actually, it's not. The best you can possibly get is Song Dynasty. But they're about the same. But either way, three French TC is absolutely bonkers. Especially with the fact he's making traders. All of which are free. So that's 140 gold he's just got there. With this with this landmark for free. And now he's short trading. I, I think this is a better choice. Yeah, sure, you're going to be bringing in less gold. But at least you're not going to be losing them, right? Because Corvinus is now starting to get out quite a few longbow. He's up to four. He's also grabbing some more upgrades of his own. We see uh, double broadaxe coming out as well as uh, forestry for Corvinus. Interesting choice there. I wonder what his plan is here because he now has down a barracks. Maybe he looks to go for a bit of an age two push here. I think that's definitely uh, an option. CDF, you know, he's gone very greedy. This is the most greedy you can possibly get. Chamber of Commerce, 3TC, one of, the, one of which is all the way over here. Absolute madman. And we see... He's going to be bringing in a lot of trade here. We'll take a look, see how much he gets with this short trade. I doubt CDF is going to be able to set up a market here. Your best case is probably to set up a little market in just the corner. And uh, let's see how much gold he gets. So 25, so 50 gold. Yeah, it's not a lot. But it's better than nothing, right? And these traders are free. And you can actually increase that by sticking a market here. Stone walling, maybe uh, even just palisade walling will do, to be honest. But it looks like CDF is going to be grabbing that board. Nice food source for him. And CDF, how greedy are you getting? He goes Chamber of Commerce into 3TC, now into Castle Age. What's he going to be going with? It Guild Hall. This man is the most greediest man on this planet. What an absolute... This is a crazy build. 
Corvinus, he has something to say about this, though. He's got four longbow out. CDF has nothing to deal with this. That landmark is going to have to get cancelled. Yeah, there it goes. He, he, he just has to place it next to the, the TC or something. But honestly, I feel like at this point, you want to just try and uh, get down a stable to deal with this, right? You're going to be losing out on a lot of traders here. Maybe he doesn't care about the traders. But he's going to be missing out on some food here. Going to be missing out on a couple traders. But that guild pool is getting up. Corvinus behind this. He's just pumping out units right now. Not looking towards a car slage. Might be turning his attention now. He still has plenty of units in the queue, though. That guild hall going to get rushed up here. We've got 19 villagers on that landmark. Villager will be going down as well as some more traders. But again, these are all free. Which is kind of bonkers. We've got horticulture, double broad axe, specialized pick, wheelbarrow. All of those important upgrades through. And now we can even make even more free traders, right? Because he's now in the castle age. But that age up comes through. Where is the production? Uh, hello? CDF? What is the plan here? You're just grabbing more eco upgrades. More, <laughs> more eco upgrades results in more traders. How greedy is this guy playing this? This is absolutely crazy. I've never seen anything like this. Corvinus is going to be aging up himself, I'd assume, with the King's Palace in this sort of position. Unless you go for, like, a forward white tower. And we see lots of production getting dropped down now for Corvinus. He understands. He, he needs to try and deal with this greed because this man is being way too greedy over here. Corvinus has enough to age up. And there it is. King's Palace is going to get dropped down. So definitely the, the correct choice here. Because look at CDF's economy. That's starting to, to get quite a bit, a bit ahead. No. CDF, what are you doing here? He's going to do the... It's going to be Red Palace, right? Where's he? He's putting it here. Oh, my goodness. 3TC. Chamber of Commerce. Fast Imperial. What is this? What on earth is this? Who is this? It does Corbinus know about this? I don't think he... He knows about it. He sees it. He is going to be so confused. 12 minute Red Palace on 3TC as the French. I am just amazed. He's up to the Imperial Age before Corvinus is up to the Castle Age. And now that this Red Palace is... How, how much more greedy are you going to get here, CDF? Are you now going to go for a wonder play? You have no production down still. I mean, Corvinus, sure, he's being denied away here. He's going to have to go around. I mean, CDF still has no production down. I am I'm amazed. He has the guild hall set to wood, which is interesting. Certainly a, 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 an odd choice there. I, I still see no production down. I, I'm not sure what the plan is. He's mining so much damn gold. I guess you're gonna need imperial upgrades. Maybe at this point in the game you just go mass uh, mass knight, right? Just grab yourself uh, a university, grab that royal bloodlines, grab the elite upgrade. Maybe iron under mesh. Even just dropping down a, a a blacksmith will get you the plus three uh, melee attack for free. And there it is. The stable going to get dropped down. And we also have investment incentives coming through as well. This is actually so smart. Because you get an extra 5% discount on knights. So this, this great build is actually kind of working here. It shouldn't work. And Corvinus, you know, he's falling behind when it comes to eco. Look at this. He's about a third of the eco behind. CDF is now in the Imperial Age with Omega discounted knights because of this crazy bonus that the French have with their, their influence as well as the enlistment incentives. So have a look how cheap these knights are going to cost. With this coming through, let's take a look. There it is. 105 food, 75 gold. And he should just be able to spam this out. Unfortunately, you don't get any cheaper upgrades. But you do get cheaper knights. And now Corvinus, he's going to be reacting to this with a keep on the front here. He understands he needs to put some pressure on here. Stone walls also coming up for him. Or for Corvinus. Just walling him completely in here. Really, really smart choice. You know, you need to punish this. But I think it's going to be hard. Look at this. Just triple stable coming down. Mass knights. CDF. He's out of gold in the base, though. That could be a big issue for him. 
So at the moment, he's just mining away at some stone. I, I guess you just use the Chamber of Commerce and just sell maybe some some wood, maybe some food. Because you're not going to need a, a load of gold here because you can set the Guild Hall to it as well. I think maybe the Guild Hall set to gold here would have been the better yeah. choice. Uh, just because you're running out of gold now. But Elite Upgrades should still be able to come through for him. Not in the queue yet. Lacking a little bit of food. Cancelled Saddles and uh, Chivalry could also be nice. But I think at that point, you just prioritize Knights, right? We see so many stables coming down. We're up to five, sta six stables, seven stables. Eight stables. We're up to eight stables right here. This man is wanting to pump out these Knights. And Corvin, as he realizes, okay, I think I might need to start making quite a few Spearmen at this point in time. I think I might need some, you know, I think I might, that might be a, a good idea. And CDF, I think you got to grab Royal Bloodlines as well, right? You're not going to get the discounted price because you didn't go up with, uh, you didn't go up with the Royal Institute, uh, not Royal Institute, Royal Institute, yeah, Royal Institute, the, the one that gives you the discounted Royal Bloodlines. But CDF going to be running underneath this keep. Lots of damage coming through from that keep as we don't have any sort of... Uh, actually, we do have some upgrades coming through. Where's that blacksmith at? Is it up here? Oh, it's up here. Oh my goodness. Look at this. He has a university down. He's going to be able to grab himself real bloodlines. He has this plus three attack coming through. Well, already through. And now look at this. CDF is going for yet another TC. The greed that this man has is bonkers right now. It is going to get denied away though. Spears are here for Corvinus as well as English short bros. And now we've got a trebuchet through from him as well. Elite upgrades come through. We're about to have wedged rivets through as well as chivalry. CDF is committing to this keep right now with just knights. Which is an interesting choice. He's having to make a farm transition now as well. Which, as soon as this gets set up, he's going to be in a great spot. Which he's, he's pretty much making the whole farm transition now. So once he has that... that farm transition through, he's going to be able to make some, some decent numbers of knights here. He's up to 106 economy right now. I think four of which are traders, which are currently doing nothing. But the majority of his of his force is still working. And we see here, this red palace is so damn hard to get past. Those knight numbers are really starting to, to build up now. In saying that, maybe four is not building up, but you get the idea, right? He's, he's got a lot of the upgrades that he needs. Red rivets, royal bloodlines, elite upgrades, cancelled saddles, and chivalry. This is one of the craziest builds I've ever seen. And now he's going to be sending out his uh, his traders. Okay, not exactly sure what that that's entirely for. I don't think he realizes this stone wall is up. Oh my goodness. What is wrong with this guy? What is wrong with you, CDF? I'm sorry, but this is your fifth TC this game. This is your fifth TC with Chamber of Commerce into Fast Imperial versus the English. I, I, I'm... If CDF wins this, I am going to be absolutely amazed. He's still producing a ton of knights because he's got nine knights in the queue right now. Red Palace starting to take quite a bit of damage here. I think CDF might want to start to think about bringing some villagers over here to repair it up. But look at this. Keep for Corvinus. Going to be going up. But look at the damage coming through from the, 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 the Arbalest from the Red Palace. A huge amount of damage gets put onto this keep. This keep will not be standing for that long. Especially with knights coming in here as well. He should be able to deny away this keep. Or at least do a lot of damage to the villagers around it. But it looks like he's just going to be going in for the dive on the trebuchet. Definitely a smart move here. Look at the amount of damage coming through from these knights. Not a lot of damage gets put onto them. And the amount of value they're able to find here. Taking out just a couple trebuchets is huge. These knights are not expensive, by the way. They're so cheap. 75 gold, 105 food. It's really not a lot for how strong these guys are. I think that, that's what makes this Fast Imperial actually somewhat decent because of that investment incentives and the, the bonus around the keep that makes the knight so much cheaper. That, that's what makes this Fast Imperial build somewhat decent. And it's kind of working here. Look at this. Corvinus is losing out on so much siege right here from just these knights. And they're not taking much damage either. They're fighting against their hard counters right now. And CDF now looking to go in for some raids. I think he can honestly just dive this TC. CDF now has through tier 3 range defense. He's got through a lot of his uh, melee defense as well. CDF's upgrades are absolutely bonkers right now. And he's got the economy behind this. He has just projectiled this game into like the 40 minute mark. By the 20 minute mark. It's crazy. 
Corvinus, you know, he's done a decent job here, actually. He's keeping up with CDF. He's been on 3TC. Hasn't lost that many bills. He's been picking up relics as well. We see four coming in. He'll be able to get that fifth one as well. Another keep coming down. Corvinus really st starting to set up a nice front line here. Getting out more trebuchets. He just needs to pump out Spearman at this point. He doesn't... He's getting crossbow, but honestly, I think he just grabbed mass spears. That's all you need. We see Knights also coming out from Corvinus. Interesting decision here. They're just going to get absolutely destroyed by uh, by CDF's Knights. And we see here that red palace. Oh, it got taken out. It, it got taken out. Oh, that is huge. But look at the massive Knights starting to build up for CDF. These are only veteran, veteran upgraded spears. Corvinus has yet to reach the Imperial Age. And now we've got a cannon coming out. Look at the cannon. He needs to try and take some shots onto this keep while he's still got the times three attack with it. But look at the knights getting the surround in here. Corvinus losing out on a huge amount of army. Cannon needs to start to focus down some of the uh, the production here. We've got another couple rams coming out from CDF. That keep does get up. Boiling oil is through as well. And now we have a sacred site victory coming through here from Corvinus. CDF's numbers starting to look pretty decent here. Boiling oil barely affects these guys. Actually, boiling oil isn't actually through yet. It's, it's currently being researched, so apologies for that one. But it looks like CDF just going to be diving under here, taking out all of that siege. Something that Corvinus has really been trying to build up this game. And look at the amount of value CDF's finding here. Corvinus is trying to dive in under here with a, with keeps, with villagers, trying to take out this cannon. Villagers going to get pulled here for CDF. Going to be able to keep that one alive. Corvinus, he's, he needs to just pump out more and more Spearman, but he's only down to, he's down to eight and four crossbow. CDF is still at 19 knights. He's still just pumping only knights. What is this game? We've had five TCs from CDF. Chamber of Commerce. Fast Imperial into only knights. Up against the English. I am sorry, but what is this game? Uh, this is going to be one of the weirdest games I've ever seen. And CDF is actually working for him. This is the sort of build that I would think, okay, yeah, okay, that, that's just a meme. That's just a meme, but no, it's working. It's actually working, and look at this CDF. He's setting up even more production over to the left-hand side of the map here. The amount of stables he has down right now is absolutely crazy. I mean, the English late game is better, but if you get to the late game 30 minutes before your opponent, <laughs> I think then, uh, then it certainly does work. Have a look at this, though. Spearmen just don't stand a chance up against knights in this sort of a mass. Corvinus is trying to... He understands. Okay, this is looking bad. I, I need to get out more spearmen. I currently have two spears out in the field. No knights and no crossbow. I need to get out lots of spears. Because we've got a serious problem on our hands right here. <laughs> you know, it's looking rough for Corvinus. Because now the knights are getting into the base here. Corvinus doesn't have anything to do with this. These knights are too damn good. 364 HP. 20... 9, 32 attack right here. And he's got plus 3 ranged attack. He's got 8 ranged armor. He's only taking 2 damage a hit from these TCs. And now CDF, he's grabbing lightweight beams. Another upgrade he can grab in the Imperial Age. It's going to be increasing the amount of damage that these rams can do. And he's just going to be able to take out all of this production. Corvinus' is eco now going to be in a little bit of trouble. We see... Oh, CD, no, look at this, he's going for a forward keep drop now, and he's making rams in the, in a, in a forward position here, just gonna look to take out a lot of the, the production here, these rams starting to, to get taken out here, we see Corvinus has pulled some builds, this keep is gonna be, is gonna be getting up though, this is crazy stuff, how is this working right now, I, I'm not sure where, where Corvinus has even gone wrong this game, I, maybe, maybe this King's Palace was a mistake. Maybe he should have gone for the, the White Palace. Maybe somewhere near the base here. Uh, but it's so hard to pinpoint because CDF's build here has just been so damn crazy. And he's about to get up the, the Red Palace once again. Going to be securing up his eco inside of the base here. And there it is. It gets up. He can garrison these builds inside. That's if he notices even. But we see that Red Palace. It's going to be enough to push back these, uh, these spears. And the knights in the base here just causing so much havoc. So much of Corvinus' eco currently idle. That keep is up for CDF as well. Ram's going to be starting to make their appearance. We see just currently sitting outside the, the siege workshop for the time being. But this is so crazy. And the thing is CDF has gold. 
We see he's got plenty of gold to his disposal, being guarded by these TCs. Maybe that's where Corvinus went wrong. He needed to guard these positions of gold. Because if CDF has no gold, he doesn't get his eco upgrades. Or not, not necessarily the eco up upgrades, but the military upgrades. He can't... He doesn't have enough gold to grab all of these upgrades without making use of gold outside of the map. And Corvinus, he tried with the stone walls, right? But CDF has so much over here already, right? It, it's so hard to shut that down. And now CDF, he's just piling more and more units in here. Look at the look at the economy right now for Corvinus. So much of it's idle. It's sitting in the TC. Look at this! So much of Corvinus' ego right now. I think all of it is idled. He's, all, all of Corvinus' is... It, it's all idled. It's just walking about the, the place right now. And CDF, he's got 20 knights on the field. Another 10 in the queue. He's got rams coming out now. Starting to take down a lot of the production here. Corvinus... He doesn't even have the sacred site going for him anymore as this keep went up over here. Oh, man. CDF with a big brain play here. Something I thought we would never see from the French here. So damn greedy. And Corvinus, look at this. Just a couple knights in the base here. They're able to two hit villagers. Which is just crazy. And there's nothing Corvinus can do about it. Look at his eco. He's down to, to 87 and 24 military. Uh, sure, they've got a, around the same military. But CDFs are, are worth so much more. These are elite royal knights. With royal bloodlines. With all of their blacksmith upgrades. And they cost a hell of a lot, lot less. Because of enlistment incentives. And the, the French bonus, right? With the discount. That's so cheap. Honestly, I think this is still one of the most overpowered things in the game. With the, the, cheaper, the cheaper knights. And cheaper arbalists. Because that's... You can also get cheaper ranged units from this bonus for the French. Which is, I don't know, it seems a little bit crazy. And now CDF, look at this, he's going for a monastery. <laughs> that is a BM monastery right there. He's wanting to take the relics away from Corvinus. And he's going to be taking them for himself here. Looks like he's bringing back the knight as Corvinus. He's going for a bit of an all-in play here. Is he going for a... He, he could win this with a landmark snipe. The Red Palace goes down. Guildhall next. Town center. And then the Chamber of Commerce. Corvinus, is he pulling everything? Honestly, if you're Corvinus, just pull everything. Your last chance here is a landmark snipe. But CDF, he's back with the knights. Look at the knight numbers. He's up to 34 knights. Guildhall, the next landmark under threat. CDF, he's trying to get up a keep here on the back. That, oh my goodness. Corvinus, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And knights are coming in, though. Honestly, Corvinus just needs to pull everything. He needs to pull everything. Uh, but he, he's not pulling everything. He needs to pull everything. He might still get it though. Guild Hall goes down. Villagers being repaired or, or coming in here to repair that Guild Hall. It's going to be a close one here. The next the next building is the TC. It's under threat. <laughs> and CDF, he's even grabbed uh, the, the university upgrade to give more health on buildings. So he's got an extra 2,100 HP on this and an extra 1,500 HP on this. And it's going to be enough to clean up those rounds. It was looking close for a second, but these knights just able to do so much damage. They take out those rams without really too much of a threat. And with that, GG gets called. Corvin is going to be tapping out here. Up against what has to be one of the craziest French builds I have ever seen. If you did enjoy this game, please do feel free to leave a like. Consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Jesus, that was crazy.